While British Petroleum works on yet another fix to the leaking undersea oil well in the Gulf, the government says it will launch a criminal investigation into the spill. Underwater robots are trying to shear off the top of the broken pipe, which would then be capped off. BP says if all goes right with this operation, the spill could be contained by today. Now, meanwhile, President Obama said that if laws were broken, those responsible for the spill would be brought to justice. If our laws were broken, leading to this death and destruction, my solemn pledge is that we will bring those responsible to justice on behalf of the victims of this catastrophe and the people of the Gulf region. And for more now on Washington's reaction to the Gulf oil spill and other news out of the Capitol this week, we're joined by Brian Montopoli, political reporter for CBSNews.com. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you here. So let's talk about this change in tone from President Obama. Too little, too late, or the right thing to do? Well, I think maybe a little bit of both. Uh, the White House was slow in responding to the oil spill, and I think they know it. Uh, and what they're trying to do now is to pivot. For a long time, the conversation was, we're working with BP, we're overseeing BP, we're trying to get this fixed. Mm -hmm. The message on Tuesday was very different. All of a sudden, they were saying, BP is the bad guy, we're opening a criminal probe, we're going to bring people to justice if need be. Very different message, a message that puts them more on the side of the American people in pointing at BP and, and assigning blame to them instead of being sort of partners with BP and potentially sharing in the blame along with them. With the mounting frustration in the Gulf, understandably so, as this leak continues to spew oil, is this what President Obama needs to do? And can they really bring people to justice in this situation? It's a fair question. Um, President Obama's message on Tuesday was, we will bring people to justice if laws were broken. It's not clear that laws were broken. Uh, there is an expectation that BP will, will pay fines here, uh, violated potentially a number of uh, statutes, uh, could pay more than $100 million in fines, which is what Exxon paid after the Valdez disaster. But the reality is, it's not clear that there were, that there were laws broken. And what the president said is, if there weren't laws broken, then we're going to change the laws, because this is the kind of thing that can't happen. Okay. Um, the White House today dealing with a number of issues. One of the other ones is the flotilla raid um, and, de and saying that they support the U.N. Security Council's resolution on, uh, into an investigation. Um, do you think that that was the right response? The White House is walking an unbelievably difficult line on this. On the one hand, you have domestic political pressure to stand with Israel. Uh, you'll notice in that U.N. Security uh, Council statement, it condemned the acts that took place that led to uh, people being killed. They didn't assign blame as to, as to who committed the acts. What you're hearing from the rest of the world, or much of the rest of the world, is condemnation of Israel. The White House was very careful not to condemn Israel, which of course is a very close ally. But on the other hand, President Obama is trying to reach out to the Muslim world. And this situation is being seen very negatively in the Muslim world, including in Turkey and Egypt, traditional allies for the United States. So what's happening now is the White House is trying to sort of walk this narrow line where it doesn't entirely stand with Israel, but it doesn't condemn Israel because it doesn't want to get in trouble with the Muslim world, but it doesn't want to get in trouble with Israel. Mm -hmm. There's no good solution for the White House here. Uh, they're just kind of want this one to go away. Very tough. And what about in uh, the context of the peace talks? How can this affect things? Well, the good news, I guess, is the peace talks were going so badly that uh, they can't get much worse. I mean, there's no talks for the Palestinians to pull out of. Uh, it does point to, though, the problem of uh, the Gaza Strip, which is controlled by Hamas, and that's uh, different than the group that they're uh, negotiating with, the Palestinian Authority. So. This, this is solution. There, there's, there's no easy solution here for the White House. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is the flotilla was ostensibly bringing humanitarian aid to an area that is incredibly impoverished. Mm -hmm. The Gaza Strip, most people live on a dollar a day. Uh, and, and fundamentally, the humanitarian aid hasn't been getting there. Uh, so this is going to put tremendous pressure on Israel to end this blockade, and it's going to put pressure on the United States to have a voice to say, we need to do something about what is a humanitarian crisis. Back here in the U.S., huge story, Al and Tipper Gore splitting up 40 mm -hmm. years of marriage. What's going on there? What happened? You know, it's sad. Um, and the reason it's sad is because Al and Tipper Gore were this sort of, within the cynicism of politics, you had this one couple that seemed almost sort of nerdily uh, in love with each other and, and not sort of playing an angle. Uh, 
You'll remember in the 2000 Democratic Convention, they had this kiss. Uh, Who can forget that? <laughs> and it was, you know, it went on too long and it was sloppy and it was sort of embarrassing for everyone watching it, but it felt really sincere and genuine. And they just seemed like a real couple um, and, and, and to some extent contrasted with Bill and Hillary Clinton, who a lot of people saw, fairly or not, as sort of more of a political partnership than sort of a traditional couple. Uh, and so, you know, when, when Alan Tipper Gore broke up, I think that, you know, that hurt a little bit because it felt like this bastion of sort of non-cynical, just straight up, sometimes embarrassing uh, relationship and love ended. And, and, you know, in this cynical world of politics, that, that hurts even more sort of, you know, yeah. to lose something like that. I always love those moments of expression. I like <laughs> it. All right. Brian Montopoli from CBSNews.com. Thanks so much for being with Thank us. Thank you.